assalamu alaikum everyone in today's lecture we are going to discuss another important chapter of physical pharmacy and uh, in this uh, video we are going to discuss the miscellaneous pharmaceutical uh, processes uh, so we are going to discuss some of the uh, these processes so the first process is the this desiccation so what is this process what is this definition so uh, let's start the video and uh, if you have don't subscribe my channel so please go and press the subscribe button and also like my videos and support my channel and uh, now we are going to start our lecture so first uh, there is a definition of the uh, desiccation that it is a drying process of uh, removing mechanically administered water from the substance but it is different from execution in the next uh, topic is of execution so i will uh, tell to you that what is the process of execution actually uh, the desiccation and execution are the similar process in both process we are removing water in a simple word we can say that we are drying a drug so uh, uh, in this process we are removing water uh, from a drug or a substance so due to this removal of water these terms are very similar but there is a quite difference between both of them so this difference is very important and you have to note this difference so uh, first uh, you are uh, in desiccation you are removing water but uh, from what process mechanical process you are going to use a some mechanical process and then you remove your water but in the execution process you have to uh, need the, the temperature you have to give the heat and uh, you, by heat you uh, lose the, the water from that uh, substance and you can give your dry product so this is the little and slight difference between both of these terms so now you have to describe that uh, the substance which undergo at the process of desiccation is called as desiccated substance and the example of this desiccated substance is the silica gel activated charcoal which is also called as carbon and calcium chloride these are the example of desiccated substances because they have no water in them no not even a single vapor or water in them they are totally dry there is a difference between the word desiccated substance and the dry word in this uh, paragraph this thing is explained that the dry word and desiccated substance has different between them when we say a dry substance it means some amount of water is present in it or when we say a desiccated substance it means it has not even a single drop of water in it so it means the silica gels and activated charcoals has no water in them they are totally uh, uh, without water so uh, now uh, you you can uh, take the example of a dry substance for example mention here the dry vegetable drugs for example sina leaves contains about 12% of moisture in them or they have 12% moisture and we call them dry vegetable drugs so this is the main difference you have to note that everything we are saying that this is dry not mean that it, it has no moisture maybe it has some moisture in it so therefore you have to differentiate between these terms because they are so really close to each other but they have a slightly difference you have to note this difference so uh, many processes are used for the separation of liquid and this process is used in drying because in the pharmaceutical preparation we need a lot of a lot of processes to dry our drug in the end when we get a pure drug we have to dry this drug and we have to ob obtain the pure form of this drug so therefore the drying process of a drug is very important and whenever we dry a drug we use the desiccation or execution processes so uh, the first uh, process is, is done then uh, we move on to the next process of uh, pharmaceutical process so the next process is of efflorescence and deliquescence 
so uh, these are uh, ex- uh, opposite to each other exactly opposite it to each other so first of all we explain the efflorescence so uh, i mentioned to you the three definitions of efflorescence and you can write any one of, of above it all the three definitions means the same thing just the wording differences so the first definition you can write down on to uh, your notes so the first definition of efflorescence is that it is the process of losing water from a hydrated substance from a hydrated substance and to get a anhydrous substance okay this is the first definition second definition is that efflorescence is the process in which there is a spontaneous loss of water and to get the anhydrous substance third definition of efflorescence is that it is a process in which we are converting a hydrated substance into anhydrous substance by release the water so you can adopt any of one of the, this definition i have mentioned all of these definition above here this so you can write up all of the these three definitions first definition is this second is this and third is this so you can write up it so now in the efflorescence definition i have mentioned the two important terms what are these terms first i use a word which is called as anhydrous anhydrous com- uh, compounds so anhydrous compounds are those compound which contain no water in them and we can say it as a desiccated substances and the examples i already mentioned there that silica gel activated charcoal borax calcium chloride all of these act as anhydrous substances while the second term which i use in the definition is the hydrated compounds hydrated compounds the word indicate they contain water in their structure so the example of hydrated compound uh, is na2co3.10h2o because it has 10 molecules of water in it and it may contain 7 molecules of water so you write up that the second example is na2co3.7h2o okay so now we are saying in the efflorescences process a hydrated molecule which has water in it is going to convert into the anhydrous compound by losing water definitely the difference between the hydrous and anhydrous is the water so you are removing this water and converting the hydrated drug into anhydrous so how this process occur it cannot happen uh, suddenly the water is loose and hydrated drug convert into anhydrous it cannot happen suddenly it is going through a process and what is this process what is this procedure this procedure is actually that it is the difference of vapor pressure actually uh you know that the hydrated substances contain water in them due to these water vapor uh, due to this water they have a contained vapor pressure so the vapor pressure uh, is has uh, so it means a hydrated substance has its own vapor pressure and the atmospheric vapor pressure is the second vapor pressure so whenever the vapor pressure of that hydrated substance is increased than the vapor pressure of atmosphere then the water loses and the drug convert into the anhydrous substance so what you are will understand whenever the vapor pressure of that drug increases then the vapor pressure of atmosphere then the water will be loses so the example is that uh, this approximately uh, water pre- uh, pressure due to water in the atmosphere is 10 at 15 if the vapor pressure of hydrated substance exceed exceed then the 10 mm of hg then what will happen this substance will lose its water give its water to the atmosphere and then convert into anhydrous substance so this is the whole procedure that how the process of efflorescence is occurring second process is very important and it is just reverse and opposite of efflorescence this process is called as deliquescence 
uh, sorry i have uh, cannot mention it you can add the example for example na2co3.10 h2o going to the process of efflorescence and converting it to the na2co3 water molecules are removed so you can write up here plus 10 h2o so you can write here h2 so these 10 molecules of water is evaporated or removed so the in the second process the liquid sense uh, in this process uh, just opposite of efflorescence that we are converting an anhydrous substance into a hydrated substance okay so uh, this uh, the substance which are going undergoing this process is called as the liquid sense and hydroscopic substances and the example of these substances is NaOH, CaCl2, and KOH. Okay, these are the examples of it. So why, uh, you know, why uh, anhydrous substance is converting into the hydrated substance? The reason behind it, just the opposite of this reason. Now, what happened in the deliquescence? The vapor pressure of hydrated substance is less than the vapor pressure of atmosphere. So due to this difference, the water molecules to add up in the anhydrous substance and convert into the hydrated substance. Okay. Now we move on to the third, uh, sorry, fourth uh, process of uh, uh, physical pharmacy process. And this is the exication process. Uh, this is quite similar to the efflorescence and desiccation. Just a little difference in it. This In this process, we are removing water. Okay. The first three, uh, four experiments which I have told to you is just the removing and the adding of water. Just in deliquescence we are adding water but all the three others in which we are removing water. So in the execution uh, we are removing water but by the controlled conditions that we are controlling the temperature, we are controlling and maintain the conditions of this process. So for example, if you give it the example of Cu, SO4.5 H2O. So it has five molecules of water. If we give it the 30 degree temperature, it will lose two molecules of water. Now, when the two molecules is removed from the five molecules, what will remain? Yes, three molecules of water remain. Now we increase the temperature up to three, uh, sorry, 500, uh, sorry, uh, 100. So now the two more uh, water molecules lose. So it means out of three, two more release. So out of uh, three, one is one kilo of water is remain, and the last one will be removed at 200 temperature. So you 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 are observing this that whenever we are increasing the temperature, the water loses, and we are getting our point. Okay, at 30 we have we lose two molecules. At 100 we move we lose two more molecules. And at 200, we lose one more molecules and all the five molecules is removed out. Totally, the CuSO4 is converted into a anhydrous substance. So, the, you have to take care of the temperature. By controlling the temperature, you can undergo the process of exigation. Now, the, another example of uh, this exigation process is Na2CO3.10 H2. So, now you are observing that it has... 10 molecules of water so we have to maintain the temperature such that to remove all of these 10 water molecules okay so now uh, another uh, third important example of execution process is fpso 4.7 h2o so now you uh, uh, need seven molecules you do have to lose it so now what will happen first the six molecules of water can be easily lose up by controlling the temperature but when we lose up the last one last seventh molecules of water then what will happen before losing it our molecule can decompose mean FeSO4 become convert into the ions because of such high temperature so therefore uh, this is the limitation of execution process that uh, it can cause the molecules to undergo the uh, decomposition process. So, uh, in, in such substances, this, uh, this uh, process happens, they say FeSO4 can undergo the decomposition, but the other substances remain same and they can lose uh, their molecules due to strong bonding. So, now we have covered the first four uh, 
mycelaceous physical pharmaceutical press, uh, processes now we move on to the next process so the next two processes are uh, exactly same to each other just the uh, little difference between them so the titration and levigation titration can be called as dry grinding and levigation can be called as wet grinding so the difference is just this as the name indicate aapko naam se hi pata lag gaya hoga ki kya difference hai titration mein kya ho raha hai wet uh, sorry dry grinding hai mean kya hai ki koi water ki involvement nahi hai but in the levigation wet uh, drying uh, grinding it's mean there is involvement of water in it in so in the titration what you are going you are reducing the process grinding the word grind means to reduce the particle size to reduce the material which is your desired product you are reducing its size and you are uh, going to your to achieve your goals so now what you do you have first you have to explain the definition of it and the definition you will write up is that this is the tra- uh, traditional method of producing homogeneous mixture by grinding particles into the small size so it is a traditional method in which we are ma- mixture we are creating a mixture of homogeneous mean in which every compound become mixed into each other and form a single phase mean they such dissolve that they look up look like a single phase so in this grinding we are reducing the particle size whenever we reduce the particle size we are increasing its solubility so therefore the grinding process is very helpful for us and the instrument you will use for this grinding process is the pestle and mortar okay now the second process is the levigation as the name indicate that it is a wet process means there is involvement of water so what will happen you will ground the paste but you will make the end product as a paste you will uh, add, not obtain the product as a powder form you will add the water into this powder form and make a paste out of it so this uh, in the levigation we get a paste like product so you will grind this paste uh, using the pestle and mortar but the specification is that you will use a flat headed pestle so this is the specification uh, agent used for the levigation process and the substances which can undergo the wet grinding are kaolin prepared chalk and calamine so all of these uh, things are undergoing the levigation process and they are converting into a paste like form so due to this paste like form they are uh, wet grinding substances so uh, the definition of this process is that the process of wet grinding in which you are grounding your desired material and then convert it into the paste by the involvement of water so this is the definition of levigation process so i hope that you will understand all of these processes now we move on to the next process and if you have some questions some doubts then you comment in the section and you ask your questions i will answer to you and uh, i hope ki aapne ab tak mere channel ko subscribe kar diya hoga video ko like zarur kar de aur bell icon ko press karna na bhule taki aapko aane wali har video ka notification milta rahe to chalte hain ab next process ki taraf now the next process is of eliteration eliteration is another uh, separating technique in which we are separating the low density particles from the high density particles so the always the low density particles are the fine particles because they have very small size but uh, the high density particles have coarse particle size because their size is very large so we need a process by which we are separating both of these particle we need a technique to separate them so due to the difference in the density and due to difference in the size we are going to differentiate them we are going to separate them so electrification is a technique which help us to do it so what will happen and what is the procedure of this process is this the whole paragraph explain the procedure that what will happen you will take uh, you will add up your paste first 
first you will uh, undergo a process of lavigation you will make a paste out of it then after making a paste you will allow it to stand for the some time you will leave it and after the some time you will see the heavy and the coarse particles settle down to the bottom while the particles which are very fine particles and have very small size and have low density they will float up at the upper part of your paste so in this method uh, you will separate them uh, you will uh, collect out the upper liquid and you separate out the lower liquid and in that way you will separate these particles so this is the technique of nutrition you will use so it this process can be used on the small scale um, by uh, conical mining flask and such like that things but nowadays these process also occurring in the industry level in the large scale production because we are preparing a lot of paste paste are used in the cream production you know the creamy texture it has some wetty texture in it so this wetty texture is obtained by a process of lavigation then after lavigation we have to go through the process of eutration because in eutration we are separating the coarse particles because uh, in the creamy texture we don't like a very large particles okay so we need to separate them and we are separating them by this eutration technique so it is very important and very useful for us so in the industrial process we use a large electrician tanks for this process these tanks have steering gears a large number of gears and due to these gears we can go through this process easily and this process is very time saving and uh, less time consuming so therefore it has a lot of benefits so now we are going to the next uh, uh, process that is of vaporization so vaporization is another important a uh, process uh, which is used in the preparation of drug actually uh, vapor pressure is the conversion of a liquid into the gas at its boiling point so uh, this at this boiling point the liquid uh, goes up and uh, due to the kinetic energy which store in the liquid molecules these liquid molecules become came up to the surface and then they convert themselves to the gas or vapors like form and they are living uh, through the molecule uh, liquid surface so this whole process is called as vaporization and the pressure which is created by the vapors is called as vapor pressure okay so now in the uh, vaporization process we need extra energy we need uh, the kinetic energy of these molecules so how this kinetic energy of molecules produces actually we are going to give extra energy we are giving it extra heat uh, so due to this heat the molecules gain up the kinetic energy and then they will lose their uh, kinetic energy when they come to the top and then they lose their energy and uh, become convert into the vapors like form so whenever you increase the temperature the viscosity of molecules increase the kinetic energy of molecules increase and due to this increase the vaporization process is increase so it always occur at the boiling point and it is not a surface phenomena evaporation is the surface phenomena but vaporization is not a surface phenomena because vapors can be produced into the liquid itself so just they are living by uh, uh, by reaching toward the surface of the liquid okay so there is a difference now we move on to the next topic that is evaporation so in the evaporation process you are converting liquid into the gas but below the boiling point of that substance that is very important in vaporization we are converting liquid into the gas at its vapor boiling point but in the evaporation we are below its boiling point so this is the difference in evaporation we don't require extra energy because it is a natural process occurring at the room temperature no need of temperature here and we also have some uh, no temperature requirements and it is a surface phenomena because it is happening on the surface of that liquid so it has very important in the manufacture of pharmaceutical preparations of 
various liquid soft and dry extract in the extraction of various enzyme hormones antibodies and such like substances so there is importance of evaporation so uh, you have to mention this importance that it is going to prepare your liquids it is going to extract out your enzymes your hormones your antibiotics and a lot of things okay so the next process is of sublimation uh, sublimation is a process in which you are converting your solid into the gaseous vapor form uh, means your solid is directly converted into the gaseous state without melting into the liquid so this process is called as sublimation process and the reverse process can occur which is called as depoisation or in depoisation we recondense the gas molecules again to convert into the solid form so this is the process of sublimation you are going to convert your solid into the gas so there are some types of a uh, sublimation first type is that you are going to convert your solid into the liquid and then from liquid it convert into the vapors and then from vapors it can going to convert into a gas and the type 2 uh, uh, type 2 of the sublimation process is that you are uh, if the solid at a specific temperature at vapor pressure is equal to the external pressure it will on heating at this point directly to the vapors and reversal changes on the cooling so if solid cannot at uh, the temperature exert a vapor pressure equal to the external vapor pressure on heating first is liquefy into the vapor pressure of liquid and then it goes uh, to boil and vaporize and then cool so this is the type 2 of sublimation so the examples of type 1 and type 2 sublimation are mentioned here first is the arsenic trioxide second is the iodine and camphor type 3 sublimation is also present in which solid convert into liquid liquid convert into vapors and then vapors convert into solid again so this is the type 3 of sublimation now we move on to the la uh, another important process that is of adsorption adsorption is a process in which we adsorb a one substance on the other and we are absorbed two substances first is the absorbate and second is the absorbent absorbate absorb on the surface of absorbent and absorbent is a molecule which allow the molecules of absorbate to absorb or attach on it so uh, this absorbent uh, process the definition as concentration of a substance at the boundary between the two heterogeneous phase mean first is the um, uh, charcoal and on the charcoal a layer another layer of styrene hcl is added up so this is the process of adsorption we are absorbing one layer above the another layer so now we move on to the next process this process of fusion in the fusion or uh, it is also called as liquefaction in this process we are heating our solid and melt it we are uh, we continuously heat that solid until it melts so this process is called as fusion and uh, this is especially uh, works uh, this process is useful for the melting of fats uh, waxes and resins which has a lot of uh, viscosity in them and also help in the preparation of ornaments plasters and suppositories so the fusion process is really important because it helping us for melting the solid like substance which have very high viscosity such as wax and fats etc so uh, in this process we are going to convert them and uh, heat them until they melt into uh, their um, at their melting point so next process uh, we are going to study is the calcination process so in the calcination process uh, whenever you are in an inorganic substance is strongly heated so that any volatile compound is driven off and uh, this process is called calcination that you are strongly heating and you are taken up the volatile compound out of it so it help in the preparation of calcium hydroxide magnesium oxide and uh, calcinated magnesia zinc oxide uh, also called as zinc white so this is the importance and the example of calcium 
ignition process next process is the ignition in the ignition as the word indicate you are again strongly heating but a organic matter in the calcination you are a heating inorganic substance but in ignition you are a heating up organic matter in the presence of air it carbonizes it and uh, convert into the carbon dioxide and the ashes which are uh, left remains so this process is called as ignition you can also call it incineration and ashing because the ash of the compound after the ignition is obtained now another process is the centrifugation in this process you are uh, separating two compounds by rotating them at very high speed and due to this high speed uh, these substances separate out from each other and then we can separate them and then we can uh, take uh, part uh, the water is thrown out of material and then we can dry this crystal and obtain the uh, desired material now our last process of this of freezing freezing is done by external cooling a uh, mechanical refrigeration and the freezing temperature varies between the material and important thing is that the material should remain uh, frozen throughout the drying process so we are also drying our drug by freezing uh, it in the mechanical refrigeration so all uh, i think ki aapko ye sare topics samajh mein aa gaye honge if you have some confusion then you comment me and ask to me i will definitely answer to you and if you like my videos please subscribe to my channel and uh, and like it more and more so that i can bring to you a more and more such content to you and make you the best version of yourself and you should be proud of yourself milenge agle lecture mein take care of yourself allah hafiz